Hey guys, it's Misty from The Book Rat, and it is the first day of a bit of a, a first impressions binge. So all week this week, I'm going to be sharing excerpts and first impressions of a bunch of books that are either just released or are coming out soon, so that you guys can get a feel for them and decide if it's something that you want to pick up. Before we get started with today's book, I'm going to go ahead and apologize in advance. If you can hear my fan or if this little hair is getting on your nerves, I needed to close my windows because the cars outside could be so loud, so I figured this is the less noisy option of the bunch because there's no way that I could exist in my room right now with the windows closed and no form of air because Michigan in the summer is hot and humid as insert weird metaphor of hot and humid things. Anyway, I've got a whole stack of books back here on my desk that are waiting to be dug into. I've read through a bit of each of them to see my general first thoughts, and now I'm going to share them with you, as well as a little excerpt so you can get a taste of the style for yourself. Let's get right into the first book, which is Vasa in the Night by Sarah Porter. A full synopsis to this, as well as links to the book, will be in the description, so you can check that out there. I'm not going to waste too much time going into what this book is about, other than that it is a fairy tale retelling and is supposed to be pretty dark and creepy and is set in Brooklyn, and that's probably all you need to know. I'll start off with my thoughts on the book first, and if you want to skip forward to the excerpt, I will leave an annotation. You can just click on the book and it will hop you forward to that part in the video. But until then, for the rest of you that are sticking around, I'm going to give you my quick thoughts on what I've read so far of Vasa in the Night. I have to say it has a really interesting voice so far. It's reminding me a little bit of the most recent book I actually finished, which is Nightstruck by Jenna Black, in that it seems like it's going to be a little dark, a little creepy, a little unsettling, with maybe some slight horror elements, but, you know, not over the top, not necessarily gory, though I don't know, because supposedly there are some heads on spikes, so I guess we'll see. But it just has a cool vibe to it, a sort of folkloric meets, urban fantasy meets, you know, slight horror-ish thing kind of going for it, and I like that. So far it has a really intriguing voice. I kind of connected immediately with Vasa, and I'm very fascinated by this world that she kind of finds herself in and want to know what's going on. I like the slight oddball magical realism thing that it's got going for it. I mean, that pretty much always wins me over, but especially when it gets on the kind of darker, weirder, quirkier side. Hopefully it won't be too much. The prologue did seem a little muchy for me. Um, not completely, I mean it was an interesting prologue, but it could become heavy-handed if overdone, I guess. It's got this great sort of everyday casual weirdness to it, this sort of low-key unsettling vibe that I really like. You know, just that slight wrongness that kind of helps you relate to the world because it's not that different from your own, but at the same time it kind of gets under your skin because it's like it's just not quite right. And I'm really intrigued by Erg, which is the part of the first chapter that I'm going to share with you. Erg is a little doll who has kind of come to life, and that I think gets under a lot of people's skin. That's really creepy. My sister is totally freaked out by dolls, and in fact, my uncle used to give us porcelain dolls for Christmas, and um, they had to live in my closet. She couldn't even have them in the room. They freaked her out so much. But at the same time, it's kind of like funny how it's incorporated, so Again, it kind of reinforces that subtle weirdness and slight creep factor while still being, you know, palatable and relatable. So I'm really intrigued. I don't know that everyone will be, but I'm really looking forward to it. So those are my kind of quick thoughts and first impressions on the first section, at least, of Vasa in the Night. And now I'm going to go ahead and get into the excerpt. I'm going to skip over the prologue because I think it's a little weird and doesn't give you the meat of the story. And I'm actually going to kind of treat this excerpt different than I normally would. I would normally go straight for either the prologue or the first chapter and just read a little bit of it, but I'm going to kind of skip around to bits and pieces in that first chapter to make a more concise and tight excerpt for you guys, skipping over the things you don't really need, just so that this isn't super long. So I think all you need to know for this excerpt is that night has been lasting longer and longer in Brooklyn. You know, the digits on the clock might stay the same, but it's feeling longer and people are sleeping for what feels a full night and getting up in the morning and eating breakfast and it's like two o'clock in the morning and it just seems to never end. So it's the middle of the night and Vasa and her sisters are watching a movie and Vasa's trying to be a little bit discreet and I think that's all you need to know before I get into the introduction of Erg. So, here we go. Let's watch something else. Shut up, Vass, it's almost the end. Well, then you won't be missing much, right? 
But there's no hurry. They'll put on something nice and loud eventually. There's a lot of squirming in the pocket of my sweatshirt, and I cover it with my hand. Tiny teeth nip at my thumb, though the thick fabric keeps it from hurting much. So impatient. Static abruptly drowns out Ingrid, forcing the issue. That happens a lot these days. And then there's nothing to do but change the channel, which Stephanie does after casting a scowl my way. Just because it's convenient for me doesn't make it my fault. The next movie is tenderly devoted to chasing and shooting and blasting. When the first car goes up in a fireball, I slip a puff of corn into my pocket, and then start crunching loudly myself for good measure. Chels and Steph don't seem to notice. They're mesmerized by the flashing lights. I can hear it, though. The shrill, styrofoamy nibble squeak from my pocket. I can feel the slight vibrations against my waist as she chews. A tiny fist prodding my guts. Erg wants more. Such a little thing, but she never stops eating. Why should she? When you're carved out of wood, you never gain weight. I've seen her gnaw through a candy bar bigger than she is in two hours flat. I've seen her actually burrow under the crispy batter on a chicken leg and then pop out near the bone, leaving the skin sagging into the tunnel left by her mauling. Erg and I have gone on this long without Chels or Steph or anyone getting wise to her. My sisters think I'm the greedy one, always stashing cookies in my pockets for later. They think I suffer from strange compulsions. All my clothes have grease stains on the right hip. Sometimes I get sick of how demanding she is. Sometimes I've even toyed with the idea of letting her go hungry for a few days, or even not feeding her again. She'd complain at first, but eventually I'm pretty sure she'd just go back to being inanimate. Instead, I stuff a whole handful of popcorn in. No matter what I pretend, I'll never actually starve her. And she knows it. She's the only thing I have for my mother, so there's nostalgia working in her favor. And then I made a promise. Steph suddenly puts a hand to her throat and lets out a gasp. What? Chelsea asks her. You lost your locket? She shoots me a significant look. The slight squirming in my pocket stops dead. I was wearing it. I hope... maybe I just knocked the clasp open? Steph starts ransacking her pillows. It will show up soon, I'm quite sure, Chelsea says, taking time to enunciate each word and arches her eyebrows my way. I excuse myself to the bathroom and perch on the toilet lid. I can feel the lump in the pocket of my hoodie, but it's as still as a wad of used tissues. Erg is pretending to be asleep. I get her by one tiny wooden foot and drag her out anyway. She dangles upside down, her eyes closed, her painted black hair gleaming in its flat spit curls. She doesn't react when I drop her in the sink, which is enough to prove that she's faking. I turn the water on full blast. I'm not a kleptomaniac, really. I just harbor one. Erg leaps up sputtering, water sheeting off her spherical head. Her feet clop on the pink porcelain as she leaps around, but the sink is too slippery for to her to climb out. She's lacquered, so she doesn't have much traction. She lands on her carved blue rear, legs clacking. You turn that off! Fassa! You'd better stop! Are you going to give the locket back? I'm not going to yield quite so easily. I'm sick of getting blamed for Erg's lousy behavior. Probably. Eventually. If you don't do anything to provoke me in the meantime. Oh, Erg, I say. She reminds me of my mother more than I like to admit. Just quit the damn stealing and we won't have these problems, okay? Say you'll put it back tonight and I'll dry you off. And oil me? I turn off the tap. No matter how mad she makes me, Erg is still my doll. Her painted lashes flick up and down, batting droplets out of her flat blue eyes. Sure, just put it back. You're going to ruin my finish if you keep doing this, Erg complains. I might even split. She waits for me to pick her up, buff her in a warm towel. Instead, I stare at her. I know her ways. I'll slide it in her bed tonight, and she won't have any reason to accuse sweet Vasa of doing anything untoward. Okay? Okay? I pick her up between my thumb and forefinger and wrap her in a hand towel. She's a pretty thing, with her swooping violet eyelids and tiny ruby mouth her thin, arched black brows and perfect curls. She has a carved wooden dress, sky blue with white painted loops standing in for lace at the collar and cuffs. Her exposed skin is just varnished pale wood, then her legs end in white socks with more of that curly trim and black Mary Janes, all painted. Her knees, elbows, and waist are jointed and she can pivot her head. Nice workmanship. Too bad they didn't spend more time on her personality. In spite of myself, I kiss the top of her shiny head. She tries to bite my lip, but I anchor back in time, and her little wooden jaws snap on empty air. 
I plonk Erg down on my lap and get out the bottle of lemon oil from under the sink. It's her favorite, and I always try to keep some around. Dab the oil on some toilet paper and give her a nice rub down, working it up and down her limbs while she makes little purring sounds. Getting oiled makes her sleepy, and she rolls on my black flannel pajamas and rubs her face against me like a kitten. She can be cute sometimes. She better be cute, really, considering all the trouble she causes. You don't like Stephanie anyway, Erg murmurs. She's kind of a bitch. <laughs> so that is a little snippet from Vasa in the Night by Sarah Porter, including Erg, who I think I'm fast falling in love with. As I said, the book, the full synopsis, and all the links are in the description, so if you want to know more or want to add it to your shelves or pre-order it or anything like that, you can do so there. It comes out... Um, in September. Let's see if they gave me a date. I don't know, it comes out in September. So a little bit of a wait, but not too bad. If you've already read it, share your thoughts in the comments, and if you've been wanting to, or you were intrigued by that excerpt, or it annoyed you, or anything like that, um, definitely let me know. Chat with me in the comments about it. We'll be taking a look at the rest of these books all this week, so definitely stay tuned. But that is all for today's video. As always, thanks for watching, and happy reading!